Okay, it's been a while since we visited uh, the fish room here, again in our living room. And uh, things always change. It's surprising to me over time, going back and looking at some of these videos, how different they are from one to the next in terms of certainly the plant growth and also the fish. Now in this particular tank, there hasn't been much change in the fish, so they've been thriving and haven't lost many. Uh, Ray's tiger barbs, the four tiger barbs you see in this picture, are doing well and it's now February so it's uh, going on two months uh, since Ray passed away and uh, I got to clean out some of his tanks, what was left. He uh, was insistent on keeping things going even though he couldn't get down in the basement to take care of them and so in the final month or so most of the fish passed away as the tanks deteriorated and uh, since then uh, his, uh, Joyce, his wife, has been able to pass on all 22 of his tanks uh, to various people who could make use of them. Still got a couple big ones left that she's trying to pass on and if she can't find anybody they're just going to get destroyed and it's a shame as you've seen in some of the past videos. He had some nice big tanks and uh, it's a shame they couldn't be put to use. What's interesting here is, and I'll try and capture it as I zoom in, uh, the Amazon sword plant is having babies and uh, they are doing rather well as you will see from the two right here. And I'm really not sure how to uh, transition them from the mother plant uh, growing as they are. The roots are finally developing and on this particular um, I don't know what to call it, a stem with the, the plants growing on it, there are at least, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine baby plants, of which these two are the best looking right now, and the only ones that have developed roots so far. And so I've not been able to uh, do much in terms of finally separating them out and putting them in some pots with uh, some material that they should grow in but uh, eventually they get overtaken by algae and uh, they get killed and I've had to clean out the other tank as you'll see in a minute uh, from that just yesterday so anyway that's my current challenge anybody has any ideas feel free to post your suggestions and uh, meanwhile, when we get enough of a root system, I'll try and plant it in the substrate down there, which is just to gravel, as you can see. The uh, catfish, both the ones that I brought in from Ray, and uh, there's a couple of panda cats in one of the tanks over here that continue to do well. And I've been very pleased to see that the uh, neons uh, have lasted all this while. As I said before, I love neons, and we have a nice school hidden among the water wisteria here. Um, they usually don't last long, but these have been going on, I forget how many months now, six to nine months, and uh, I think we've got the full school still here, which you can barely see. If I put some food in there, they'll bring them out a little bit better, but uh, anyway. The banana plants down there in the bottom continue to do well. Uh, surprisingly, they haven't grown out. And uh, sometimes banana plants will develop large leaves, and uh, these have stayed close to the planting and uh, just do well uh, without gr outgrowing themselves. So that's been kind of nice. There's those tiger barbs. The other two over here in the corner here someplace. Like I said, there's four of them all together. You can always catch three of them, but not the fourth. Anyway, I'm also pleased to say that the uh, red-tailed shark is in here someplace and continues to do well. Uh, the hasn't grown really big but uh, still thriving and growing slowly so all is well here in this 
corner tank as I call it. It's a uh, pie shaped. I, I couldn't be more pleased having replaced that octagon shaped or hexagon shaped tank that developed a leak back around Christmas time and replacing it with this. I couldn't be more pleased with how well this tank uh, lends itself to decorating and uh, just filling in the corner of our living room here with something that's very attractive. And here on the opposite wall in our living room we have the bow tank that I often report on and uh, the angelfish that I rescued from Ray's big tank are doing very well. There's nine of them here and I think two of them are ours and the rest came from Ray. The bigger ones came from Ray. And uh, this tank, I'm having trouble with algae. Covers the plants and pretty much wipes out the plants. Last night I turned the heat up, took my shirt off and uh, went diving to clean up as much as I could. And as long as I've got it clean I thought I'd give you a view of it. And uh, the the leaves of the java fern really get covered with the algae and uh, you can just rip those leaves off and they just grow back. The Amazon sword plant down here to the right got covered and I probably took off maybe 20 leaves from that and that's the pleco in front there. I don't know, he's hanging out. He's uh, he looks dead, but he's not. And uh, after I trimmed all those leaves, there he goes. Now we know he's alive and well. And uh, the plant still looks pretty good, but I literally took 20 leaves off it. So it's uh, been quite a cleaning out that I did just yesterday. And you can see some of those angels hanging out together. There's some uh, algae tabs in the uh, bottom there that they're paying attention to. And the gouramis are just not very active today. I need to do a water change. Uh, one of the things that I inherited from Ray was a very extensive uh, water test kit. And so last night while I was cleaning out this tank, I got into that and finally tested the water and everything seemed to be fine. The uh, nitrites are a little bit high and so I'm going to give this a water change and uh, see if that doesn't help these fish a little bit more. But they're doing well, especially that, that nice black one. He had uh, had good luck with angels and uh, I was glad to be able to rescue them here on his behalf and I have to admit it, I, I miss Ray a lot. We were good friends for more than 65 years and shared this hobby even as teenagers. So uh, I, I often turn around ready to send him something or call him and realize I can't, he's not there. And he passed away just around Christmas time and uh, it was quite a job taking down all those 22 tanks. One got passed along as a community tank to his neighbor who used to take care of the fish whenever he was traveling or something of that nature. So uh, this is what's transitioned to our tanks here. You can see the garami, that, that snake garami down in the lower, just right of center is one of his. And the uh, blue garami in the background uh, coming forward, that was one of his. The pearl garamis that you see there that was something we had. And I just lost one of those blue gramis last week, but the pearl gramis seem to be doing well here, as they are in that corner tank also. I'm pleased with that. I think the pearl gramis are very pretty fish. And so I'm glad that they seem to be doing well. The red-tailed shark in this particular tank, like I told you, I try to keep red-tailed shark in each one of the tanks. Uh, more than one in a tank does not do well. For some reason or other, uh, I start losing them. I one time thought that'd be cool, have a school of red-tailed sharks. They were small, but uh, within very reasonable time frame, I lost all but one. And that's been a pattern, so 
all I do is put one in each tank now. And for whatever reason, we lost it in this tank. And uh, put some platies in there recently, and I don't see them. They're hiding out or they've died. Uh, the serpe that you see going across the front there seem to thrive. They've been there a long time, not growing as much as uh, just hanging out, along with the uh, black tetra. And uh, that lone zebra coming across the top there is uh, not looking too healthy. But it's amazing when I go back and look at the videos of these tanks, how different they look from one to the next, as I said. Right now, there's plenty of plants in here, but I've had to trim them back so much that uh, it's like there's not a whole lot in here, but it uh, still gives it what I liked in terms of variety of greens and plants. And uh, like I said, I don't know what see the fish are hanging around down there, all five of them. Uh, there's nine in here all together, and there's five all together right down there. I don't know what is causing them to be so inactive right now and just hanging out the way they are. Anyway, that's the uh, bow tank. And uh, it is such a pleasure to have these decorative tanks in the living room where we can enjoy them all the time. I, I see what their angelfish are going for. There's a, an algae tab right there that's giving their attention. And it isn't dissolving, surprisingly enough. Most of the times the uh, upside down catfish, here he comes. Here he comes out of the, the back. He will devour that, and for whatever reason, uh, these particular tabs, he doesn't particularly care for. And so, uh, it's still there, melting from having put in there last night. Usually it wouldn't last that long. And that uh, upside down catfish will chase the pleco up in the upper right hand corner there every once in a while. They go at each other. Uh, that upside down catfish uh, started out as just a small one like you'd find in most pet stores. And uh, lo and behold, it's, we've had it here for, well, 12, 13 years. And it's one of those things that uh, it's just part of our family here. What can I say? And of course, no fish room update would be complete without coming in here to the office and catching the uh, update on the hex tank, which is just something that entertains me while I'm working in the office, which I do most of the day. There's that red-tailed shark in this particular tank. He's growing nicely. I like when they get uh, a little bit bigger than that, or even that kind. You can see, maybe in this video, uh, the white tip that develops on their top dorsal fin. It makes a very pretty contrast to the dark black and the red tail. Uh, this tank, I don't know what to tell you about it. It's uh, The live bears tend to fade here. I had a friend give me a bunch of platies and they didn't last long. Just got emaciated and died. And yet uh, I've had some guppies in here, which there are a bunch of babies in there right now. And just more recently I picked up a couple colorful male guppies, as you can see, coming across the tank there uh, on sale at uh, Petco someplace. And uh, there's some of the black mollies from that original batch that uh, developed in here. But again, they're not uh, thriving in a very strong way. Uh, the plants here are rather thick. I took out a big bunch of uh, Christmas uh, fern just yesterday. It was crowding the tank much too much. And I happen to like an overgrown tank. And this one certainly is overgrown and gives plenty of hiding for the babies and for the fish to wander through, which I always find being natural for them. Uh, so the other thing that is strange is the um, duckweed that comes and goes here. And I'm sure it has something to do with the chemistry of the water. And right now it's on a recovery phase. You don't see it in this video because it floats, of course. But the net result is we have a, an overabundance of duckweed at times. And I take it all and throw it away. And uh, then there's none there for a long while, even though some got left. And then all of a sudden it starts multiplying again and eventually covers enough of the tank that I need to take it out to let the light get in. And uh, don't know what that's about. I really should study it. 
And lo and behold, we've got um, oh some plants in here that probably would do better in the open. The that broadleaf plant you see right in the center here was part of uh, a plant that I got, and I put it in the other tank, and the fish loved it. They ate that thing to shreds. It survived in this tank, uh, but it hasn't survived in either of the other tanks. The fish just eat it up. You, know, you see the red-tailed shark sort of tasting it, but he's just going for algae on it, not eating the leaves itself. I love the red-tailed shark. They are one of my favorites. And uh, he's back in the algae there, or the fern rather. And so that's sort of an update on the three tanks. And uh, I've been meaning to put together a memorial video of, uh, uh, in memory of Ray and his uh, 65 years of friendship since we were kids together in Metuchen, New Jersey. And that uh, friendship lasted until his passing and I was able to be with him the day before and we uh, he laid in bed and I sat next to him and we went back over memories and laughed and talked about our fishing trips and the fact that one of his videos has 22,000 views don't know what that's about but anyway kinda cool and uh, so we said goodbye we knew it was going to be the end and uh, said goodbye and the next day he stopped and I do miss him sadly, so this is partly in his memory. I do see down here, I don't know if it's there, one of four neons that have uh, kept alive in this tank for a good long while. I'm tempted to add some more to build out the school a little bit, but at the same time, uh, I've been tempted to take them out and add them to the school that's in the other tank. But this uh, tank here is in my office and it gives me the uh, just something to turn around and be interested in and been able to probably watch this tank more than any other in terms of uh, enjoying it. So that's sort of an update from here, February 20th, 2018. Thanks for watching.